I'm going to be doing a lot of talking in detail about speaker positioning in this video. So if that's not your thing, like if you want quick answers, you can skip to the end where there'll be a kind of a wrap up or conclusion. However, with that said, speaker positioning is kind of dependent on your room and your speakers and your listening position and your expectations. So maybe it's worth watching the whole video. Before I get into that, I want to talk about the room a little bit more because this is the one I've been working on and I'm almost done. I've just got a little bit more work to do on the back wall. Then I'm going to put some carpet on the floor, thin carpet tiles actually, just to make it look uh, more finished down here. I started building the room with speakers in place and I had those put in a specific, like two specific areas that were away from the walls so that I could work on the walls. They weren't the final positions for the speakers. I knew that going in. I just needed a place where I could keep the speakers without moving them. You know, you can move them back and forth and all that, but it's just a pain. I, I decided to pick two positions to put them. I put them there and I ran all the tests as I made changes throughout the room. And then now that I'm actually using the room, I want those speakers put in a better position. So I decided to do some testing to determine where the best position will be. And what you're looking at here is the first one. This is actually an original position that they were in, except I made these fairly rough looking stands to put them on, just quickly made so that I can move the speakers easily rather than trying to move those big speakers that were underneath. I got those out of the room altogether. Now, like I said, this is the original position and here's the measurement from the listening position that I picked out. And that listening position is about 50 inches from the back wall and the speakers are placed so they're 74 inches apart and about 45 inches out from the front wall. And here you can see a big problem in the measurement that I took. There's a major dip at 46 hertz. That's more than 20 decibels down and it's pretty easy to hear. And the reason for that, the cause for that dip is what's known as speaker boundary interference response. That's where the wave, the bass waves actually from the speaker go backwards and hit the front wall and then reflect forwards and kind of cancel themselves out at specific frequencies based on how far the speaker is away from the wall. The best way to deal with that is to actually build the speakers right into the wall so that they're flush on the front. That takes away that boundary so you're not getting that canceling reflection back to the speaker. However, uh, I didn't want to go that way so I got to explore other options. The first thing I did is I took some, well I took two of my new acoustic panels and I put them directly behind the speakers up against the wall and I ran another sweep. That didn't do a whole lot. It actually made the null deeper at the lower frequency, but it did fill in a little bit of a ripple at 166 hertz. And then I tried moving the panels up directly behind the speakers and ran another measurement, but the results weren't any different. Then I tried moving the speakers ahead 10 inches further into the room. I also moved the listening position back by the same amount and ran another sweep. And the results from that measurement told me that that was not the way to go. So I tried moving the speakers closer to the wall, 30 inches away this time, and put the microphone back in the original listening position. And now we can see something is actually changing for the good. That big low frequency dip is filling in. So the next thing I did was I moved the speakers up tight to the wall, as close to the wall as I could possibly get them. And here you can see the response is looking a lot better. Not perfect, but as it turns out, this is about as good as it gets. Here it is compared to the original, the red trace, and here it is on its own. So you can see it's getting a lot flatter. And then I did a bunch of experimenting with moving the speakers further apart and closer together. But that didn't really give me much of a change for, you know, positive or negative. So I figured I would leave them in the place where they sound the best as far as, say, soundstage goes. And that seems to be this 74 inches apart distance that I have them now. I knew going into this that that was the best position 
to have the speakers up close to the front wall or as close to the front wall as possible. Actually pulling them out a little bit can improve soundstage. I found that, you know, experimenting here. So that's something you want to look at. It's, it's kind of a compromise. You're going to lose a little bit of that, um, that response due to SBIR. SBIR, <laughs> but you're going to get a little bit better soundstage and sometimes that's worth it. So my recommendation would be to start in close, tight to the wall, have a listen, then pull them out a little bit and see how they sound. Now I went further. I installed uh, Equalizer APO on my computer. I'm doing all of this listening on my computer, by the way. So I saw that and then I got that set up and chipped away at it until I got the response down to where you can see it here in this plot, which is like plus or minus 4 dB. But I should also point out that that's for that listening position where I had the microphone set up. It's going to be close in other places in the room, but it won't be exactly that.